solvent so um uh, actually they are called stationary phase and mobile phase because uh, their action is uh, described by their names so the uh, so the chromatography paper that we use it has water trapped inside it so it has water trapped inside it and that water is not moving it is stationary and therefore this is called the stationary phase and then what's the solvent we used for example propanone or ethanol or whatever it is the solvent we use it is rising up the paper because you know that it is rising up the paper uh, while it's separating the solute mixtures so as it is moving it is called the mobile phase so uh, the solutes the different solutes they have different solubilities in the stationary phase and in the mobile phase so uh for example something can be more soluble in the stationary phase and less soluble in the mobile phase while something else can be less soluble in the stationary phase and more soluble in the mobile phase so they have different solubilities in the two phases every solute has different solubilities in the two phases and what this results in is uh basically something called partitioning so the solute is partitioned between the stationary phase which in this case is water and the mobile phase which in this case is the solid so um, if you have watched my playlist on further aspects of equilibria then you will know more uh, then you'll know more clearly about what i'm talking about because we talked about the partition coefficient there but when a solute is 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 dissolved into different solvents uh, at the same time then it is partitioned between them so as it is partitioned between them it is dissolved more in one solvent and less in the other solvent depending on its properties so if it is soluble it is if it is more soluble in the stationary phase if the solute is more soluble in the stationary phase then it will travel a shorter distance and it will travel slowly and as you can see in this case uh, the example that we did uh, this was a this was b and this was c so in this case you can see that a travels the shortest distance and this means that out of all three components a b and c a was the most soluble in the stationary phase and the least soluble in the mobile phase and uh, on the other hand if the solute is more soluble in the mobile phase and less soluble in the stationary phase it will travel a longer distance because it will tend to go with the mobile phase so as you can see in this case out of all three a b and c C is the most soluble in the mobile phase because it has traveled the largest distance on the chromatography paper and uh, this is because it is more soluble in the mobile phase than in the stationary phase so uh, and rf value we have talked about so you need to know this concept of partitioning and you need to know about how the solubilities in the stationary and mobile phase affect the distance traveled by the solute now two way chromatography so paper chromatography was something you were familiar with but two way chromatography is something new for you now uh, it is technically the same as paper chromatography but it is paper chromatography happening happening twice with two different solvents now the reason why we have to do that is uh, you place a drop over here of the solute mixture like always and as the sol solvent will rise up it will separate all uh, the uh, the sol the solute mixture into the solute components now you will use rf values to uh, to know the identity of this solute this solute this solute this solute and this solute but there is one problem over here now if you can see the pink and orange solutes they will have very similar values of uh, of rf because uh, they are overlapping with each other they have traveled the same distance so this will hinder our ability to uh, know which compound is uh, the pink one and which compound is the orange one because they have the same rf values so i'll be confused i won't know what to do and if you can see something similar is happening for blue and yellow now this is completely normal because two solutes can have similar solubilities in a solvent so this is completely normal but how do we distinguish between them so what we do is we after we have uh, we we have carried out uh, chromatography once we will rotate the chromatography paper 90 degrees so we rotate it 90 degrees so now this side which i have uh, drawn this side becomes the base the base that is dipped in the solvent 
So as you can see, uh, the we have rotated the chromatography paper now. 